Hey everybody, my name is Adam with Trinity Life Church and we are in our video series on how to share your faith during social isolation. And today's topic is navigating disagreement. Stay tuned. I think it feels obvious to many of us that at some point during a faith conversation with somebody who thinks differently with you, even, even somebody who thinks the same as you, you're probably going to experience some kind of disagreement. So, uh, so as these worldviews collide, as, as you know, personalities collide, as uh, experiences collide, we want to navigate through those moments to help see something beautiful emerge. And so I know I mentioned this in yesterday's video about not being afraid, that learn how to navigate disagreement. And I wanted to dive a little bit deeper on that topic because I know it's going to happen and I know we're all afraid of that moment in one regard or another, even myself. And so these are a couple things that I've learned um, about how to do this. All right, point number one. Don't necessarily correct people, but learn to understand them. Okay, so each person has a unique story, right? You have a unique story. Uh, knowing that story can help you understand why somebody believes something that they believe. Okay, um, they, they, that feeling of like hitting a brick wall over and over, that comes when you aren't speaking to the person's heart. You're trying to, you're trying to, um, you're trying to speak to whatever issue of truth is, is, at, is at hand right now, um, but we're not speaking to somebody's heart. So seeking to understand their story and why they believe uh, a certain way, um, as opposed to correcting them in that moment and like, like, like totally standing on a, on your, you know, your firm, solid ground of whatever truth is, is, you know, at, you know, up for debate at that moment. If you speak to someone's heart in the long run, you're going to get a lot further down the road. Okay. So don't always look to correct, but look to understand somebody. Um, that's going to put you in a posture of humility in the conversation as opposed to a posture of confrontation, right? Um, here's number two. This is something I've, I've noticed, uh, over the course of time is that oftentimes people's beliefs are tied uh, to a few very personal moments of experience in their life. Uh, I'm no expert and I'm not that old, but what I have noticed, especially with young people, is we definitely don't have it all intellectually and academically sorted out. A lot of what we know are tied to very, very few personal experiences. And so navigate through those things, discover what those are for people as you look to share your faith. Um, all right. Number two, we need to find a balance between communicating philosophical truth, Christian doctrine and personal experience. So let me talk about this uh, more broadly because it's going to be a big topic, right? So find the balance between communicating philosophical truth, Christian doctrine and personal experience. All right. Uh, so let's talk about uh, philosophical truth. You need to know how to talk about your faith without using explicit Christian references or, uh, or Bible references. At least for me, I find this helpful, right? Know how to articulate your worldview without appealing to scripture as an authority, right? Why does it make sense to you um, in the in the grand scheme of maybe uh, larger truths that we can all agree to in some sense that we can we can kind of bat around those ideas in a, in a larger sense without saying well the scripture says this right um, now don't get me wrong I love the scripture we're gonna talk about that in a moment right but we need to learn how to talk about it it's kind of like a doorway um, uh, that, that we can invite people into the Christian conversation right but we need to learn how to talk talk about it in a broader sense without appealing to uh, a source of authority that's not a source of authority for somebody else. Number two, um, there's, there, there will be moments when biblical truth is necessary, right? And for me, um, I, I try to use those moments as times to help somebody understand uh, the Christian perspective 
rather than using it as something authoritative that I'm trying to force over top of them that, sh that, that should be their authority as well, right? And so learn how to talk about it in a way that, that invites somebody into understanding and uh, as opposed to lording something over top of, of somebody. Um, and so number three, personal experience, right? So we did philosophical truth, uh, biblical doctrine or Christian doctrine, whatever you want to call that, right? But also three, personal experience. Your story is powerful. God is doing something really cool in your life and you need to share about that. But realize that your personal experience to a lot of people, it's not academically credible. You're like, oh, that's so offensive. I'm like, I know it's offensive because God really did something in your life, right? Um, so I get that, but not everybody gets that, right? Um, learn how to speak about your personal story in a way where you're not pinning your entire argument into your your personal experience because it's just not academically credible to a lot of people but it is powerful it's going to help you speak to the heart of somebody so if you go back to the first point right and you know somebody's heart your personal story is going to you, you get to learn how to weave your personal story right into where somebody else is at okay so uh, number three, make sure to laugh. This should be fun, right? This, these conversations, the, the blanket around them should be love, right? And relationship. So number one, laugh at the ridiculous things you say. You're going to say some ridiculous things. Learn to laugh at them, right? Okay. Uh, number two, make jokes about how silly the church is. Or even how silly you are or your friends are. Because guess what? We're all fumbling around this world trying to figure it out together. So make fun of it, right? Number three, as you start to poke holes at someone's worldview uh, and they start to see maybe big gaps in their understanding, there, there may be moments of tension, right? Crossed arms, furrowed brows, leaning back in the chair, getting defensive, right? You can, you can see it coming almost, you know? Um, short answers, uh, quick temper, right? And that's a perfect time to bring it back to that realm of relationship. Maybe we just got too into the intellectual side of things. Maybe we got too into the confrontational side of things. Make a joke, have fun, remind them you love them, that you guys are still friends, and that you're actually even possibly enjoying the conversation. Number four, remember, this is about relationship and not winning a battle, okay? So have fun with it. Remind those people that you love them. Uh, you know, at that phrase, the they say never to talk about politics or religion. Well, let's redeem that experience and actually have good spiritual conversations. So make it fun. Guys, that's it for today's video on how to share your faith during social isolation. I'd love to see your comments down below. Let's have a chat about it. There's so much more on how to navigate disagreement. I'd love to hear from you. But for now, see you soon.